Imagine this. You go for years and years of your life struggling with an illness, and it's an illness that impacts you deeply in almost all areas of your life. Ever since you were young, you struggled with your emotions, socialising with others, managing many life tasks, and coping with the world's sights and sounds. You go to a doctor to figure out what's up, but with each reassessment, you're given a fresh new diagnosis and a lunchbox of various different medications to fix them. After a few years of struggling to find your feet, and even understand who you truly are beyond what you put out into the world, you find yourself at a crossroad, an axe drop moment, a crisis, a state of severe mental illness, a breakup, a betrayal, an illness. At your rock bottom, you decide to take your own life into your own hands. Scouring the web, reading into psychology, asking experts, and eventually you land on the idea of autism. It's very strange you'd heard of autism, but you never really identified with much of what you heard about it. With a couple of years of research into the many facets of science and lived experience related to autism, you go for a diagnosis. And it turns out you didn't have a goodie bag of various conditions, and these medications weren't all that helpful for a reason. This is a situation that many people, especially late diagnosed individuals, may find themselves in. And sadly, it isn't the worst outcome, the worst thing that can happen to undiagnosed individuals. I know personally a couple who parented a beautiful girl called Lauren Bridges, who sadly passed away after being misdiagnosed and institutionalized. The rates of SUI and addiction amongst autistic people are terrifyingly high when compared to the general population. Not taking into account those of us who are undiagnosed and so never get incorporated into these statistics. Welcome to my Autiverse, I'm Thomas Henley, and today I'm going to give you my top tips on where to start on your own autism journey as a late diagnosed autistic person. This is taking into account, you've only really heard little bits and pieces about autism, and it's sort of relatively fresh, relatively recent for you to come across autism and start to identify with it. This isn't going to be some formal procedural medical type things, but I'm generally going to give a few areas of development that you may want to keep in mind if you are lost on where to start on your own understanding self-exploration type journey into the world of autism. Number one, emotional peace and awareness. Upon realizing that you are autistic, you would likely go through a roller coaster of emotions related to past experiences, your self-identity, the relationships that you have, and many more things. At some points, it can resemble somewhat of a grieving-like process. You become angry, you break down, you're so lost in confusion. It can also be very positive and transformational too. Almost like a second puberty, where you get to rediscover yourself, how you work, assert what you like and what you don't like. Now, the ideal place that you want to get to is peace. A lot of people get stuck in the stage of anger and resentment, in my opinion. They feel anger at the people, or the system who has not noticed that they are autistic and supported them earlier. The people in their lives who discriminate against them in the past. Even the people who had the intention of helping you, but unintentionally gaslit you into thinking things were just normal and okay. It's a problem with your character, your personality, when in reality it was related to your autistic traits. That anger can be very much seen within the autistic community spaces, that sort of vitriolic, passionate, social justice mentality that makes everything autism related in life seem like a war. It's okay, and I would say justified to be angry. But in my opinion, it'll definitely stop you from healing properly 
and processing the past experiences that you've had. So here's my recommendation. If you're on this channel, I think you're in the right place to discover and find out more about the more nuanced differences autistic people aren't necessarily presented to with basic medical autism overviews. So I recommend using the concepts or experiences that you hear from myself or other people to analyze and pick apart the pain points within your own life that are related to autism or are related to the lack of support that you've given to your autistic traits. It could be past experiences which have defined your self-confidence, your self-esteem and your frame of mind towards yourself in a negative way. It could be present things you are doing, like suppressing your struggles rather than fixing them or standing up for yourself. Or even how you perceive your own social skills and accomplishments when you compare yourself to other people who aren't autistic. That idea of internalised ableism. It could be the hidden reasons behind your desire to mask and change yourself in social contexts. Why you haven't put your true desires, wants and dreams first in front of what other people expect you to be doing with your life. And maybe why you stick by problematic individuals or continue working somewhere which generally is not fulfilling and generally doesn't make you feel good about yourself. Analyzing these situations with a new perspective and with the new knowledge about yourself can help you understand and reframe these situations. And reframing doesn't always mean you change it from being your fault to 100% someone else's fault. That mentality can be fairly destructive, but it may give you an insight into what you need to do, the way that you need to reframe things in order to make peace and learn from it. Learn from the experiences that you've had. Move forward with your life in a positive way. Number two, working with your strengths and weaknesses, this strength-based approach. Just being aware of things can make a lot of difference to how you manage and process even present and future things in your life. You don't need to make adjustments to your life if you don't want to, even if other people like myself recommend them. Like unmasking, perhaps. But you'll be better off knowing how it can affect you in the short and long term if you continue to mask in this situation. Allowing you to plan and recuperate better if you choose to mask in certain situations. This is just one example. Having a clear awareness of what you struggle with can be painful with all the societal expectations of success and competency and conformity that we are constantly reminded of in real life, people around us, but also on social media. It's even harder to take action, to stand up for your own, albeit atypical life choices and desires and dreams, and make some real positive change. Some things that you took as being negative things about yourself may not be negative either. It may be the wrong application of those traits, the wrong environment for you. You may be scolded for not being able to juggle multiple things at work if you are working as a manager in like a social care team. But in the right job role for you, your ability to focus on one thing for extended periods of time may be an exceptional, like coding, like anything which requires a lot of desk work, a lot of research, a lot of single independent work, a lot of work around one thing or a select group of things. The important and scary thing to remember about being an autistic person is that you know what you need a lot more than other people around you. I mean, things that you really want or really need in yourself. Not those things that you tell yourself that you can deal with or the things that you ignore due to feelings of shame. It's your life and with the right planning efforts and potentially the right support, you can do what you want to do and you can get what you need to get. Yes, people will push you to not do that. And it's worth hearing them out, especially if they care about you. 
and they want you to succeed in life and they want you to be okay and stable. People will push back as they may not understand your perspectives and needs, even if they're doing it out of love and concern. It can be a very, very difficult thing to wrestle with, especially if you have had support by a couple of individuals who have your best interests at heart, but don't truly understand what being autistic means for you. And listen, I don't care if you're a teen, you, if you're in your early 20s, 40s, even if you're retired, you still have the capability to make some real changes to your life, some real positive changes, and follow what you need to live your life to the fullest, and what you need to have the best self-perception of yourself. Forget the age-related expectations and judgments that people have of you, they will just hold you back in the long term. Continuing to learn about autism, hearing other people's experiences, and genuinely considering whether the choices in life are aligning with your strengths and weaknesses is a very worthwhile thing to do at any stage in your life. Learn how to advocate for yourself and your autistic traits. Learn how to process others' opinions which don't recognise your difference. Learn how to understand what is ignorance. What is unintentional gaslighting? I'd say do this whole thing in the proper way, of course. Please don't go on a rampage of cutting ties and making spontaneous decisions, but generally factoring, factoring this in in the long term, you know, talking to loved ones and people that you care about, about autism and about different ways that you experience life, helping them understand, um, is probably the best way of going about it. But if you find that people are holding you back or criticizing or mocking you, it may be worth considering that connection that you have with them. But please don't do anything spontaneous. You don't want to cut all the connections and ties that you have. Not, 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 not the best to go with the extremes of this situation. The best place to be in is in a comfortable, happy place where you can use your strengths to their fullest and mitigate or seek support for the things that disproportionately hold you back. This is the idea of the strength-based approach, and it's very integral to how I live my life, and how I process and understand what I am good at and what I'm bad at, and try to make the most of what I'm good at, and try to minimise as much as possible the things that I struggle with. That's the way to go for me, and i probably say it's the way to go for you too, especially if you are autistic in this relatively quite um, neurotypical world that we live in. Number three, explore your senses. <laughs> Sounds like some kind of advert advertisement for a perfume. <laughs> I'd like to give some recommendations on autism concepts to look into. And I'd say looking into executive dysfunction, alexithymia, social batteries, and of course sensory processing differences would all be very, very good shouts. Listen, I'd love to make a 20 hour video on everything I know and have experienced around autism, but that wouldn't be very practical and it would be an extremely long video that I'd have to record over multiple days. I probably wouldn't be able to do it, to be honest. However, I will touch on the sensory elements here because I think this out of all of the autism concepts is perhaps one of the most bang for your buck things to focus on, one of the more fruitful things that you can do straight off the bat. I've used a lot of isms there, haven't I? <laughs> what are they called? Idios idiosms? I can't remember. Sayings. Great British sayings. Autistic people do have sensory differences, meaning some of our senses can be over or under sensitive, hyper or hypo. You don't have super perceptive abilities like some people might interpret from hypersensitivities. It's the way that your brain processes signals from your sensory organs, not the acuity and strength of your sensory organs. There are some common ones that people notice in their own life, like hypersensitivity to light and noise, but generally they can differ from person to person. For myself, I'm pretty much hypersensitive to everything apart from blunt pressure my vestibular system, so my balance, and my proprioceptive sense, which is my awareness of my body in space. I'm a clumsy mofo, basically. I'd say try to isolate your particular problem senses, those which cause you the most background anxiety, distraction, or confusion, basically. 
and try to seek some supports to mitigate them. Expose yourself perhaps more mindfully to situations that are very high, highly sensitive, highly sensitive, highly sensory intrusive, as, a, as I'd like to say. Or potentially remove the sources of these altogether, especially if you're in a home or work environment, through environmental adjustments. You can try an array of different stim toys and stims. Personally, I use discrete ones when I'm in public and more physically louder stims in private. We call these little stims the ones that are a bit more discreet. The big stims would be things which are more typically associated with autism. My big stims would be spinning, perhaps. If you are able to isolate your hypo or undersensitive senses, you may have a better idea of what stims might be more effective for you. If you don't want to do them, you may try what I deem to be sensory activities. Basically doing activities which satisfy the sensory needs that you have. So for me, the gym is a really, really big one for me. Although it does reduce people's anxiety and generally boost people's mood, it's also a really good source of proprioceptive and sort of touch-based input that my body craves. I have a longer self-assessment type video, which is on my channel, uh, basically being able to sort of create your own sensory profile if you want to go check it out. It's not a professional medical thing, but it may give you some idea of where to start. Number four, find yourself. Don't conform. And I mean, don't conform to other autistic people and how they think they should, how they think you should be living your life and what you should be like in a natural state. When we find the autistic community, particularly on social media websites like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, we can form this strong sense of belonging, which can be good, but it can also be bad. You see, lots of autistic people online bond through shared negative experiences, especially if they are late diagnosed or fairly young, which, when redirected into positive transformation, can be ace, can be awesome. But some find themselves almost radicalized by the online environment in very unhelpful ways, in my opinion. When people indulge in hating on outside groups, it becomes very normalized for you, as it was to me at one point in my advocacy career, if you could say that. And if someone hasn't properly processed or rationalized their past, it can amplify those feelings of hatred and resentment and stop you from achieving that peace that we were talking about. It often mixes with harbored resentment accrued from those negative experiences that we have with particularly neurotypical people in our past, making it quite difficult to process and move on from negative experiences and have a more balanced perspective and realistic perspective on what was going on. Instead of viewing a situation as a very blatant intentional act of ableism done against you, perhaps it's a situation where either party in some kind of dispute just doesn't understand the differences that you both have in your brains. That might be a bit more of a realistic thing. It doesn't feel as sort of invigorating and like, you know, um, easy, you know, in, in the sense that you can place the blame on people rather than yourself, but it gives you a bit more of a realistic balanced view on what exactly was happening. There is also a heavy tendency for people within the community to police ideas, words and concepts, almost forcefully stapling their own opinions onto someone else's lived experience, sort of opinions on their own life. Not that people can't be wrong or out white or out ugh, messing up my words <laughs> or outright offensive, but lived experience communities are inherently quite grey due to their nature and very social, and therefore naturally they are fairly opinionated. Being a part of these communities and feeling somewhat reliant emotionally on them can make situations quite difficult, especially when you share an opinion or experience that other people see as problematic, inciting this sort of 
vengeful, rageful, like, backlash. It's almost like people are redirecting the trauma and discrimination that they've experienced in their life towards you sometimes. Taking offence to your own personal lived experiences and thoughts. Some people receive this treatment and distance themselves entirely from the communities that they once felt they belonged to. I would say this aligns pretty well with myself. But others seek to correct and apologise for these things, to continue to be a part of the communities that they fostered. And some continue to express their thoughts and their opinions without care. I feel like, you know, over time, although I used to call myself perhaps an autism advocate, I probably still do by accident, I'm more of a, a lived experience advocate, you know. I'm advocating from my own experience of being autistic and my own opinions and perceptions from who I am, not for autistic people. The reason for this collective policing is what I call, or what many people call, social dogma, social dogmatism. Dogma broadly meaning any belief held definitely and without the possibility of reform. It's a hard thing to crack and a hard thing to challenge this social dogmatism because in the autistic community, breaking out of it is met by alienation and assumptions of internalised ableism or perhaps even as be supremacy. It's also met with a lot of emotional hyperbole as autism is... It's, it's, it's not like an outside topic, it's very uh, intertwined with who we are and our identity and our emotions, and sometimes it's intertwined with a lot of trauma for some other people. It's important to remember that if you are new to the community, you won't be aware of the terminology and perhaps the social background or history of autism or neurodiversity. However, you have as much right to your own lived experience and preferences as other people do. When listening to other people's opinions, even myself, it's okay to disagree with them and to interpret things differently from your own experience. That's normal. That's healthy. Just make sure to read up as much as possible before diving into the controversial opinions in the social media spaces. Always be open-minded and discussion-orientated. I think that's the best way to be in the online communities. Staying fluid and open is incredibly important. And finding spaces where you can do that is, in my opinion, paramount. Places where discussion is invited and out-of-pocket assumptions about people's intentions or morality aren't necessarily made. I think those are the best places to explore different autism-related concepts in a safe space. I mean, not all spaces can be completely safe and, you know, it doesn't mean that people won't disagree, but at least you can explore those, you know. I think that's very important. It's also very important for avoiding conflicts and not getting sucked into this sort of social dogma. It's important, I think, for keeping your own independent thought and being able to speak with your unique voice. So what can you do to avoid this? I'd recommend finding other outside communities as well as being a part of the autistic community and focusing on personality qualities in people that you associate with or like or are friends with rather than just someone's neurotype. Whilst a part of these communities, remember to recognise that whilst you and I may see a lot of autism posts, videos, conversations about autism, most people in society will not. That doesn't make them bad people, just more often than not, they are unwillfully ignorant or unaware of anything to do with autism beyond potentially a few Netflix shows that they've watched. In our community, I try to pull together as many open-minded kind and unradicalized minds together. So if you want to join my community, best way you can do that is by subscribing to the channel. I have a Discord channel in my links and we always have some really productive, funny and empathic like conversations in my weekly live streams. I do them a lot. 
And if you click the notification bell, you'll be able to be notified when I'm next doing it. It's a good opportunity to ask any questions or ask me about any personal experiences that you're having. If you like what I do and you want to support me, you can do for as little as £1 per month, joining the Auti Legion through um, memberships. <laughs> That's a word. It helps a ton and you get a whole bunch of awesome benefits. The biggest being access to a year's worth of Undercut live streams, which will be available as soon as you purchase a membership. But if not, I'm honestly just happy to have you here and I hope that this video has been beneficial for you if you're just starting off in your own autism journey, or even if you have been researching for maybe a couple of years or so. Again, hope it's been helpful in kicking off your late diagnosis journey. Comment below your thoughts and hey, maybe I will do another video on late diagnosis in the future. Anyway, hope you're doing well. Make sure to hydrate yourself and take care. See you later.